Hello everyone and welcome to Nail3D channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the device script plugin in Motion Builder. This is something that did not like external development, any kind of plugin and script that I developed. But I'm going to talk about the functionality that Motion Builder has out of the box. So you can find it in devices in the asset browser. If you go uh, scroll a little bit to find here a script with the options to be embedded, external or internal. The difference is that internal is going to be a tab in the uh, Python script editor. The external is the file that you store in a disk and you have a location to this file yeah, to be located and evaluated. And the embedded is the, um, uh, the script device that actually was used for this Tetris game. And if we go to this device and see that there is a Python script code, and if we go to the properties, we could see that it's a string property which store all the code of your script to be evaluated. And then there is an action trigger. So the logic for this script is that once we trigger, the script is evaluated. And if we go to the Python editor, we could see that it's evaluated in the current context. So that means that if you uh, declare some method, if you declare some variable, um, they will store in this context of Python so you can reuse it. And actually I was using this trick uh, in order to do some optimizations because imagine you running your Python script and for Tetris is quite a huge script actually to do all the logic of the Tetris. So right now if I press up, I rest of the figure, I can rotate the figure, I can put push it down and then put something here. So all the logic for the game to scoring, to winning and etc. Oh, there will be one line right now. That will be great. Yeah. So this all the logic that's happening here is evaluated in this Python script. And to optimize it and make it faster, I am evaluating it only once. I'm checking if this method is uh, not exist anymore. So then we register in the current context all the variables and methods. But if it's already exist, we only call, call this method itself. So yeah, this is the trick I was used for optimizations uh, for this. And then 30 frames per second, the script is running. And actually to trigger them, we're using a relation constraint, which uh, has two uh, functions here. Um, so uh, two purposes. The first one is that we're reading the keyboard device. Uh, we have also a keyboard input device running as well. So the relation constraint is reading this device because the Python script code itself doesn't have access to, to the devices. That's why we're using relation constraint for this purpose. Uh, yeah, we're reading and writing the value which key is pressed into our box. We could select this box here. So this is the box which actually I'm using as the storage. You can see there are some variables that I'm using as the storage. So while I'm evaluating the script, I'm using this box to store the current state of a game, kind of. And another trick is that we have the pulse node in the system uh, category of the relation constraint. So everything just out of the box, which exists in Motion Builder, no external stuff here. So the pulse doing in 30 frames per second with frequency 30, it's uh, doing a trigger 0, 1, and push our script to be evaluated. So if we go to the script, we could see that this trigger is jumping between one and zero. So that should happen um, often enough to see all this performing in real time. So what is another super interesting, powerful thing about the Python script device is that you could think that it's kind of slow and uh, only for, um, uh, for some uh, for some demonstration stuff, but actually no, in many cases, it could be more performant and much more powerful than relation constraint. Let th let's think about it. So with the Python, you have access to the models installed on the Python. So that means it could be some interesting mathematic models. Uh, 
And also you have access to the Python SDK, Open Reality SDK on Python. So that's you have access to Quaternion, Matrix Logic and all this stuff calculation. You could quite easily get access to the model in local and world space for the matrix rotation or translation. So that means you can expose your logic in uh, with having much more freedom compared with the visual coding that you're doing with the relation constraint, which very limited on that side. And also in case you want to do a lot of relations uh, in order to control tons of objects in the scene, like a swarm or like a particles, it will be much more powerful to initialize and run compared to relation constraint where every uh, controller, every node have to be created as, the, um, as a recorder box and input live box. So you don't need to do this in the script uh, code. You can directly control the transformation of the node, of the, uh, node which is much faster transformation of the model. And then if we go to the Python editor, not the Python editor, this time we go to profile and center and you, we can see that um, even it's a huge script, it's utilizing a little, a little bit the idle thread. So if I turn this off, you will see that now idle thread is free. And if I turn it on, it's utilizing the idle thread. Um, but all other our evaluation threads, they're actually ready to go. So that means you can have a huge scenes with the characters and a lot of stuff, but still this Python script should not uh, grab much of these resources for rendering and evaluation threads for the input or characters. Uh, because the platform itself is very nice distributed be between what is uh, happening, like you see evaluation is not used right now, the form is not used, render is almost not used. So all the threads are ready to be used for your characters, for, for general stuff. And this Python script device is happening somewhere in the idle thread, which is yeah, ready to go for some additional scripting on top of that. Yes, there is one disadvantage of using Python script device is that it's triggered in relation constraint, the setup that we have right now, only in the live view that we have right now in Motion Builder. So once we go to render our scene, in that case, it will not be triggered because this uh, logic of the live performing, live evaluation will not be triggered anymore. And this idle thread as well. So it's more like UI stuff. Um, and the workaround for that is that I've included um, that walk around in the post process plugin in the open mobile repository that if you have this plugin installed in motion builder, then it will automatically look for all the script devices that you have in your scene. And during the render, it will automatically trigger to have this device evaluated in the frame. Yeah, that's the walk around for now. So the code for this walk around is also shared in the repository. Um, but in general, it's a very powerful tool, I would say, and this is kind of introduction I record here. And the next part of the video I'm going to show from the very beginning and how to do a simple logic with this uh, Python script device and how to take control of several objects in the scene.